Good afternoon, everyone. Environment Canada putting out winter storm warning advisories as well as blizzard warnings for a good portion of eastern Canada. Also, the National Weather Service in the United States, California, putting out a winter storm advisory for four to six inches of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And you do understand, it is just a week and a half away from June. The Great Lakes still have 100% ice coverage in the northeast corner of Lake Superior. And in our quest for solutions during the Grand Solar Minimum to continue food production globally, Freight Farms has a plug-and-play system using a refurbished reefer container. Interior looks something like this. We're going to take a deeper look in to see exactly what they have. June is just a week and a half away, which is the beginning of summer. Yet, Environment Canada putting out winter storm and blizzard warnings for a substantial portion of eastern Canada all the way down into Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. This is from the May 17th NOAA website. Anywhere where the white dotted lines are is where snow is going to fall. It's a long laundry list here of locations from Ontario, Nova Scotia, and Nunavut. This is where they're having the actual blizzard warnings. Go satellite with the infrared. You can definitely see in the dark blue and yellow in Canada where that storm is coming down. Nova Scotia also and Labrador and Newfoundland going to experience extreme frost advisories. Again, this will damage new plantings that are in the ground if they were able to get anything in the ground because it was so cold and snowy throughout the entire winter that they were delayed in planting by four weeks so if they actually got the crops in the ground last week then this new frost is going to kill off the seedlings or any sprouts that have come up through the soil let's go back to may 15th heavy snow in the sierra nevada mountains in several locations in the united states Specifically in California, looking for four to six inches. Another winter storm warning and winter weather advisory all across the Sierra Nevadas. Jumping up into Lake Superior, the ice concentration still at 100% in a few areas. But as you can see, there's still ice all up and down in the bays on the east side of the lake. The ice thickness is still at 60 centimeters. That's 24 inches. Taking a look at the seasonal average, the light green line in the center is the baseline for 30 years from 1980 to 2010. This year is far above average. That ice pushed up at 88% coverage. Last year was 92% total coverage over the Great Lakes. And look how far out it's extending this year again beyond what the normal melt totals are. They'll still have ice in Lake Superior at least into the second week of June and you know whenever there's a problem there always is a solution where there's danger there is opportunity of Chinese saying and one of my viewers pointed me to freight farms as a solution to our food growing dilemma which will intensify as we get deeper into the new solar minimum which will run for the next 30 years now freight farms they take these reefer containers refurbish them and apparently the output from one of these containers is the equivalent of 1.8 acres. And also when you're looking at the water usage, it uses 90% less water. I stumbled across this photo here. This was actually in the Boston area during this present winter. You know how intense the winter was with record cold, record snows. As well, they told me when I called their office that there was a growing facility. Somebody was using one of these in Minnesota this year, and they looked at the temperature outside minus 31 Fahrenheit, and inside they were growing basil. These things can withstand the cold. So what do they actually look like on the inside? They're using vertical grow towers with LED light systems that can be programmed for any wavelength. Again, these are plug-and-play. These towers pop in and out so you can easily handle them. They're on a hydroponic system. Everything's controlled. Humidity, temperature, water, nutrients, and you get the highest output from this system. 
Now regardless if you're using their containers or not, you still would really want to consider how to get into vertical tower growing. Look at the yields on this and the small amount of space that's being used. You know, there's even lower tech varieties here that you can just fill with soil, plant your vegetables, whatever it might be, spices, herbs, and bring something on out of there. I like CO2 because if we were to fill their growth system containers up to 1,200 parts per million of CO2, that would even increase the yield. Look at the difference in the CO2 concentrations on plant growth. Below 200 parts per million, you get these little scrawny, barely edible little shoots. But when you're pushing that CO2 up at 800 parts per million, you get these nice, healthy, vibrant plants. Now imagine boosting that to 1,200 parts per million like most normal commercial greenhouse growers do. Greenland ice core temperature reconstruction data shows that each subsequent cycle we keep getting cooler. And when we go through, taking a look at the overlay on the collapse of Chinese dynasties on the same ice core temperature data reconstruction, you'll see that there's a very clear pattern of decline in Chinese civilization as well as the minimums that came up. Our minimums in the West were the Maunder minimum and the Dalton minimum. Temperature reconstruction map of the last little ice age where you see dark blue, it's going to get cold again. It's a pattern. It repeats itself. This is the second year of the grand solar minimum. We will not hit bottom in the cooling until 2030 or so. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. If you like the information contained, in the video, subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030.